just say, the whole reality TV thing, I, I don't know what it's coming to. I mean, today when you turn on the TV, you see people living in confined spaces, fighting, drinking, swearing, constant abuse, e eating creepy crawlies. Um, today they call it reality TV. When I was growing up, it was called being Scottish. <laughs> say that um, because I'm Danish. <laughs> no, I, I, I can actually say that uh, because I grew up in Scotland. Anyway, like every TV show now, there is a phone number for you to call tonight and that is 08081570980. Calls cost £6 a minute, even if you don't ring us. <laughs> um, Anyway, no, I, I have to say the whole reality TV thing is pretty much getting out of control. Uh, it's getting a bit silly because people will just do almost anything to be on TV. The, the, they've got this new BBC show now called Celebrity Ruined My Life, <laughs> where, um, where you can ask a minor celebrity to come round and destroy everything you've ever worked for. <laughs> In the first episode, Heather Mills takes advantage of a nice old man. <laughs> You know what? My hair always looks glossier and brighter. Hi, Mirror Gloss. Excellent color by L'Unreal, the only quadruple <laughs> protective shielded hair color to be tested in space before the Pro Ceramide Seaman protects. During, a miniature Sherpa Gurkha army protects. After, a conditioning high-density thermospasm creates a nuclear shield, producing hair that's so bright, so shiny, it's blinding. My hair is so cared for, it's dangerous, almost evil. Its intense shine has caused an untold number of accidents. In 2001, the glare from my brilliant head blinded a driver at crossroads, resulting in a multi-car pileup. In 2003, my flicking head was mistaken for a lighthouse and a fishing trawler was driven onto rocks. <laughs> and four years later, my laser lock shrivel men's balls where they stand, ensuring that they come nowhere near me because I'm perfect. Multi-spectrum lunacy color from Lan Real. <laughs> because I'm worth it and you're not. So what other things did Walter Raleigh bring back from South America? Hmm? Weed? Yes, thank you, Gernon. I think tobacco's the word you're after. No, it's not, miss. It's weed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone, you've had your fun. What else? Potatoes. Yeah, that's right. The spud and the cocoa bean, from which, of course, we get chocolate. So the trade routes... You like chocolate, miss? I don't see how that's relevant, Mark. But do you, miss? Well, I can take it or leave it. I'd say you take it, miss. <laughs> I'll pretend I didn't hear that, Mark. What about ice cream, miss? Ice cream can be nice, yes. Are you on a diet, miss? What is this? Not presently, no. Why not, miss? <sighs> it's actually none of your business. I'm perfectly happy with my weight, thank you. Not everybody wants to be an emaciated size zero. Yeah. Some men like like vandals, miss. I do! Once more glass of sherry. 
But any self-respecting ladette would frown upon such restraint. To be a true ladette, make sure you have at least six glasses of cheap white wine, five tequila slammers, or the equivalent, followed by several Smirnoff mules, when height on the time. Then and only then will you be ready to get up on the bar and reveal your breasts to the baying male youths. <laughs> or to use a common vernacular, get your tits out for the lads. <laughs> Remember, girls, LTD, lose their dignity. Good afternoon and good luck. But, boss, word has it she's been paying her respects to Jody Marsh. Shh. Luca, it's sorted. <laughs> We're all friends now. Chantal knows who's running the show. Enjoy the party. <sighs> who's next? Some bozo. Says he's a novelist. Some Salman Rusty. You want I should send him home with his head up his ass? No, I'll talk to him. Go ahead. It's such an honor to meet such a literary light. Cut the crap. What do you want? It's just that all your books go straight to number one in the bestsellers list. Your wonderful prose, your use of syntax. So what of it? I need you to ghostwrite my next novel. <laughs> it's guaranteed success. Times have been hard for me. The job you did on Ian McEwan's new novel about wet T-shirt competitions in Ibiza <laughs> has made me understand the true meaning of literary art. Maybe. For a price, a Katie price. <laughs> <laughs> Not laughing, Salmon. That's trouble, you poncy lot. You wouldn't know a joke if it was staring you in the face. <laughs> there are those who have been made to listen to Peter C D on repeat for not appreciating my humour. <laughs> now, get out of here. And you can tell Martin Amos I'm still waiting for my 40 grand. <sighs> Hi, I'm Shelley Craig. On the inside, looking out at who's hot, who's not, who's out and who's in, and who's halfway in and halfway out, who's approaching in but still predominantly out, who was never out but always in, and who is in, in, and out, out. <laughs> This year it was personal trainers, but this year's must have for all genuine A-listers, A-list wannabes, will-bees, and ever shall be's is your own personal mayor. Check out Gwyneth Paltrow, seen here with her very own civic leader in tow. <laughs> oh, yay, Hollywood twinkles. Didn't you get my text? No, no. I texted you. I seriously didn't get it. Send it again. You've got to send it again. No, I've deleted it. Oh, oh my God, that is just so unbelievable. What? Totally done my head in. Look. Oh, my God. I don't believe it. Jessica's already there. She's already there. Oh, no. She's been there for, and there's old owner there too. Uh, oh. What's wrong? Oh my god! Oh my god! What's wrong? It's Piper. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> it's Piper. She's blocked from Archer. That is so depressing. They were made for each other. Oh, no, they've been like going out for ages. Like what was it? Like three weeks. <laughs> Oh, my God, it's Piper again. Oh, my God, is she self-harmed because of the split? She's going out with Noah.
is so brilliant for you. Bye. <laughs> and so it turned out that Arthur, my third husband, of course it's my fourth, battered for the other team. And you've got to remember, in those days, it was a crime. I mean, nowadays, it's virtually a requirement in the civil service. But back then, he got the sack, and I had six children under the age of three, not all mine to feed. And he buggered off with a rector, at least I think that's what he said. He was one to slur, of a small parish church near Whitstable. Yeah, really. Bumped into him again in 56, and he'd undergone one of the first of those sorts of operations. And well, I have to say, he did suit the name Daphne. The wooden breast rather drew the eye. <laughs> so there I was, alone with the children, and I quickly realised that a first in Renaissance history from Oxford is remarkably useless when you're gutting fish living in a bed sitting Clacton with a hungry boy. I think we're going to need a new pump, love. But it wasn't all bad. No. I was impetuous. I had youth on my side, and now and then from behind, too. I can't remember his name. Lovely boy, though. Huge hands. I'm going to have to get some parts from the van. But nothing is forever, and I up sticks and went off to the Amazon jungle. And what you do with a family of varying ages, you do the only thing you can do, form an a cappella group. And we had a not entirely unsuccessful concern singing Baroque opera to indigenous Indians in exchange for tree slugs. It tasted awful, but full of protein. But in those days, one just did. One muddled through. I'm sorry, why are you here again? Please don't hurt me. So. Screen test, basic instinct two. Jennifer Saunders, take one. Uh, sorry. I'm just sorry. Um, do you realise this chair's the wrong way around? <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Sorry. Right. So what? 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 What am I saying? No dialogue. Just show my what. <laughs> show my what. Well, that is just insulting. <laughs> well, I can't. No, I can't. Because I didn't bring it with me. <laughs> you may think it's unusual, but I don't take it everywhere I go. I can tell you. Because, because I don't like strange men pouring over it, if you must know. You want to see my CV? Phone my agent. Oh, no, oh, no, no, I don't have a problem showing my family, no. Oh, wait, I think he's coming right now. Hey, Katie. How's it going? Oh, is that coffee I smell? No. Well, it should be. Where the hell have you been, Tom? You've been out all night. <laughs> Remember your marriage vows, Katie. Men are free spirits prone to roam. Women are happy with a cat and a comb. Yeah, well, about that cat. It's peed all over the soft furnishings. Uh-uh. Remember, what do we believe about cats? A cat is a spirit of whiskers and hair, and it can piss most anywhere. <laughs> See? Scientology. It stinks. Anyway, I was worried about you, Tom. You could have been anywhere with anyone. <gasps> I was achieving clarity. So you were partying then? It's Scientology, Katie. When we Thetans get together, we like to unleash our imprisoned spirits. The ball game! Hey, I was watching that. <laughs> Scientology, Katie. You think I really want to watch the ball game? It's like our revered leader, L. Ron Hubbard, said. While ladies slave in the kitchen sphere, men put feet up, have a beer. Now I'd like some coffee, a fresh fruit platter, and a Danish. Oh, while you're there, honey, could I have uh, some orange juice freshly squeezed? If it wouldn't trouble you to get off your own butt! <laughs> it's Scientology. <laughs> Suri needs changing. Why don't you do it for once? I still don't see that coffee. You know what? Stick that melon up your ass. I can't do that. And while you're sticking it up there, don't make a sound. What are you talking about? Well, you expected me to squeeze out an eight-pound baby without making sound. That was different. Oh, 
Didn't you know, Tom? Our revered leader, L. Ron Hubbard, said in his advanced teachings that once you've reached the state of clarity, you must insert a watermelon up your ass. <laughs> it's Scientology, Tom. Scientology. Right. Right. Okay. <laughs> Not a sound, Tom. Not a sound. Ladies to Nadette's. Etiquette for the modern woman in six easy lessons. <laughs> Lesson three, vocabulary. The true Nadette doesn't mind her P's and Q's. Far from it. It's not so much P's and Q's as F's and C's she's interested in. <laughs> Emily will now demonstrate how to respond when another intoxicated young girl bumps into you. Car <laughs> Capital, Emily. Remember, girls, LTD, lose that dignity. Good afternoon. <laughs> Hello, Mountain Rescue, how can I help? <laughs> right, calm down. Where are you exactly? Oh, that's awful high. <laughs> right, right, are you on a ledge or down a crevasse? <laughs> a crevasse. Oh, that's the same, because I know how to spell ledge. <laughs> can you speak up a bit? Oh, I'll just put a big hole. <laughs> Stuck. In a big hole. Freezing to death. Aye, well, now you mention it, it's a wee bit nippy here and all. Josie, can you turn that thermostat up a couple of notches? <laughs> Have you been drinking? Because you're very slurred. Uh, well, can you speak a bit faster? Because time is not on our side. I've got my line dancing the night. To be honest, I don't normally go out in a wee day, but there's free nachos if you order a pitcher of beer. Now, don't get hysterical. I'm here to help. Let me give you a survival tip. Tuck your shirt into your pants, <laughs> or you'll be getting a chill in your kidneys. <laughs> that happened to my pal Terrell. She was pissing purple for a fortnight. <laughs> eh? What? Tell who you love her? Sarah. No, no, I think you'll find it's Laura. Josie, that song, it's Tell Laura I Love Her, isn't it? Aye. Yeah, no, it's definitely Laura. Hello? Hello? Gone? Some people. OK, everyone, take five. Say tonight. These look healthy. Would you like your shopping pack, Miss Katona? Yes, please. The bags are over there. I believe you have a home delivery service. Well, you believed wrong. Oh, thanks, but uh, you don't have to give me the special treatment, you know, because I'm a celebrity. I'm not. I treat everybody the same. Now, f off. to Scotland. <laughs> See, I don't think I even really like the theatre. Oh, you're joking. You must do. Not really, no. Sitting there staring at a lot of actors. Oh. I'd really rather be at home watching the telly. No, you see, I love it. I saw the most fantastic production of King Lear recently. It really was quite stupendous. Yeah, it was fantastic. Thank oh, you. thank you. Let me get this. No, jeez. Don't be silly. I don't mind. I'd like to. No, I couldn't possibly let you. Let me treat you. Jane, it's very kind of you, but really... My treat for my best friend. Let's just go halves. We usually do. I like to. You're saying I can't afford it. Let me, Barbara. No, I I don't want you to. Please. No. Please, look, it's not dear. Put your money away. It's fine. Just put it away. All right, then. All right. 
We'll go halves. No, no, no. I'll get it. Don't be silly. I'd like to. Anna would be furious if he knew I let you pay. Well, don't tell him, then. It's not that. I want to pay. You're only saying that because I offered. Please let me. You've never offered to pay before, never. Well, I'm offering now. I'll get it. No, no. Me. 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 I hate you. I always have. I only have tea with you because I pity you. I don't even like bastard tea. <laughs> you pay. No, you! I'm not bloody paying. No, me! No way! Up yours! <laughs> Are you all right, babies? It's lovely, thank you. I've done two minutes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> Should we do a runner? Yeah. <laughs> Free in this Thursday's Independent, the classic British kitchen sink drama put the kettle on its raining. The film that defined an era. You daft cow, don't think you're going to keep it. And why not? I'll keep it if I want to. What mum would look at you and your condition? Plenty I've already from what I've heard. Hey, you keep out of it. Oh, shut up, Dad, will you? Lend us ten, Bob. Oh, shut up, you're tearing me out apart. Hey, you shut up. You're not too old for me to take me belt to you. Oh, shut up, all of you, will you? Sure up, there's an old world out there. A world of miniskirts and Hank Marvin. You sure up for how many skirt you in a minute? Oh, sure up. I can't remember the last time I had a new pair of tights. Oh, sure up, sure up, sure up, sure up! An unforgettable portrait of actors arguing. <laughs> Put the kettle on, it's raining. Free and the independent this Thursday. Totally Shelly Craig on the inside looking at it. Who's hot, who's not, who's out, who's in, who's halfway in and halfway out, who's approaching in but still predominantly out, who was never out but always in, and who is in, in, and out, out. <laughs> Russell Crowe has a new love in his life. That's right, the Aussie hunkster was spotted stepping out with his latest date, a 76-year-old Portuguese grandmother. <laughs> Maria is the one, despite the faint odor of urine. <laughs> when quizzed later, the mature Latin lady Maria Costa mysteriously said, I do laundry. <laughs> Hollywood's still twinkling. Anything metal, sir? Change. Sorry? Change, sir. I haven't got any. No, change, for God's sake, change. You're not going to shag a thing in Magaluf in that shirt. <laughs> the Friary is an exclusive residential clinic which caters for a wide range of disorders and addictions. The Friary is probably most famous for its treatment of the famous, and in turn it's its treatment of the famous that's made the Friary famous. Come in. For two years, Courtney Cox has been hearing canned laughter and applause in her head. OK, let's get one thing straight. I know what you cranks are like, and I'm not going to divulge anything personal, and I'm certainly not, under any circumstances, going to talk about my childhood. There's chocolate cake coming up for. My mother beat me as a baby. <laughs> so you're still hearing the laughter in your head? You bet. Any whooping? No, thank you. The cost cleared up. <laughs> You have a serious problem. You have to face up to it. You were so wrong. I am not deluded. I am not mad. I'm the sanest person you'll ever meet. George Clooney will be in your afternoon sessions. I think I'm a raccoon. So as you can see, sometimes it's a real drag being George Michael. <laughs> God, is that really an hour? <laughs> hey, I do that too. I mean, I usually do it in the car. <laughs> Many of the celebrities at the Friary feel depressed and suicidal, apart from Westlife, who make other people feel depressed and suicidal. In the mixed therapy sessions, the famous and the non-famous mix with mixed results. Nice, friendly faces. And you, Jeff? OK. So, Meryl, what's been on your mind? Oh, hi, everyone. I'm, uh, I'm Meryl, international movie star. Sometimes uh, I just feel so much in demand. I, as Meryl, a mother, 
Meryl the famous actress, Meryl the wife, Meryl the businesswoman, Meryl the executive producer. I just feel I sometimes don't know which Meryl I am anymore. Thank you for sharing that, Meryl the patient. <laughs> Jeff. Hello, I'm Jeff the plumber, international plumber. <laughs> I once landed a leaky water tank in Wales. I too have a problem with success. I don't have any. Thanks for sharing, Jeff. <laughs> Jane Putter is the manager of the friary. So how long have you been here? As manager, just over six months. But I was a patient for five years. What were you being treated for? Stalking, mainly. But you're better now. Oh, yes. Yes, besides, no need to stalk now. Surrounded by all these lovely, famous patients. They need me. Cooking is a good source of therapy for the residents, and it's nearly lunchtime. Nigella, what are you doing now? I'm simply rubbing goose fat into my knockers, seasoning with a pinch of salt and pepper. I'm using rosemary, but you can use oregano. Um, I'm going to shove them on a baking tray, pop them in the oven, 40 minutes, 250 degrees, and they'll come out lovely, crispy and golden. Nigella is still battling the urge to cook and serve herself up for a party of four. We, um, we suspect she's been marinating in the bath. We found a bay leaf in the plug hole. Meanwhile, clinical psychologist Neil has a major job on his hands. Well, occasionally we can be very tough on our patients. Sometimes we ask them to dig deep and confront things they wouldn't normally confront. Excuse me. Are you all right, Cher? I don't know, Neil. What's the matter? I tried, but I just don't think I could do this. Of course you can. Can I come in? OK, but... Don't be bad at me. I tried, but I, I just can't do it. It's just too hard. Of course you can do it. I think I might have to give up. I... I can't make the bird. The duvet cover was much worse than the sheets. I Go to your happy corner. place. Go to your happy place. Go to your happy place. Though some celebrities are well aware of their problems, others seem totally oblivious of them. Veteran singer Julie Andrews battles with Tourette's syndrome. So would you know why you're here? I haven't the faintest idea. Some very dear friends of mine dropped me off. Fat bitch! I have no idea why. Tosses! I know it's quite the thing to have a personality disorder these days, but poo bum fat pants willy whack! Oh, you gotta do it, don't you understand? You just gotta. I know it ain't easy, but somehow the most important things in life aren't easy. They're hard, darn hard, difficult even. And you know what that means? It means it's not easy. And you're not just doing it for me, you're doing it for your father and his father and everybody who's ever known you in your whole life. Oh, you may be reluctant now, but I know in my heart that one day you'll look back on this day with a surge of pride and you'll thank God you did this because deep down you knew it was the right thing to do, a necessary thing to do, an important step to take. So I'm asking you, Johnny, I'm begging you, I'm on my knees, Johnny, please, I'd do anything for you. You know that, you great lovable lunk. Please, for me, please, just try one more time. <laughs> Renee Zellweger stars in the new Hollywood remake of Punch and Judy. Well, nearly. Ronnie and Kerner and Co are back a week on Friday. That's the 8th of June. And John Sessions jumps over to BBC Two now. Stephen Fry is your pub quiz host for QI.